With Dragon Age Dreadwolf's upcoming reveal right around the corner, this is the start of a new series where I'll cover the events leading up to Dreadwolf, and specifically where the characters and story are leading into the next game. And as a disclaimer, this video will have major Dragon Age Inquisition, Trespasser, novels, and comic spoilers. With that said, I'm going to break down every Solus appearance since Trespasser in detail, so that you can have every context as to what he's been up to, and if you want a short summary of his appearances, you can skip to the time shown on the screen below. Dragon Age Dreadwolf was teased first back in 2018, and since then, there have been several comics and novels that have come out, and some of these have either contained Solus movements since Trespasser, or have hinted at him beginning with the first novel, To Winter Nights. There are two short stories here related to Solus, and one that mentions his agents. And this first story is titled Callback. After a supply caravan did not return, Sutherland, which you may recognize from Inquisition, and his team venture to Skyhold themselves to investigate. Once they arrive, they find Skyhold's caretaker nailed by a spike to Skyhold's horse stables. When looking at his body, they realize that he died from large gashes on his stomach and that he bled out, but that he was the one who nailed himself there to prevent the demons from using him in any way. They also discover pigment and paint under the caretaker's fingernails. This leads them to the Rotunda, where Solas had painted the Inquisitor's journey. The caretaker had been repairing it, but now the paintings have changed. The first panel now has a black shadow moving behind the breach above the Enclave, the explosion that started the Inquisitor's journey. The next panel now has red pigment that has been scraped on the Inquisitor's eye and all along their blade. And the two wolves that guarded the Inquisitor symbol are now covered in darkness. But the murals kept moving and changing, and the mass of plaster was growing, stealing pigment from other parts of the mural. Each event that had shaped the Inquisition and the Inquisitor's journey was being stripped of color. And with Solus never finishing the final painting, after the battle with Corypheus, the painting has morphed, and what now replaced the original unfinished painting was the outline of a beast that stood over both the dragon and sword. This wasn't the battle of Corypheus, this was after. And the beast was not a dragon. This beast was black and red and reptilian and also canine. The snout was blunted and toothy, but also had hound-like ears. The painting continued to accumulate, and this mask grew with scales and a tail and paws with talons. It looked like two figures painted on either side of a pane glass and then viewed together, their forms confused. A wolf that had absorbed a dragon with several eyes, a demon. The demon spoke to Sutherland and his crew. I am the heart of what was here, an echo that has breached the fade, and I can still the bravest blade or magic. I am regret. There is much of me that's here, so much regret behind these deeds. I wonder if you know the dread that's coming. And after this, Sutherland and his crew find a way to take down the regret demon. And as the demon is dying, it has one final introspective thought. There may have been a better choice. The second story that mentions Solus is actually a story about what his agents have been up to. Half Up Front tells the story of agents of Fenharel attempting to destroy Kontar with a ship rigged with detonations. Their plan is to remove any chance of peace between Tevinter and the Cunari by implicating a Tevinter Altus mage as the cause of the explosion. Fenharel's agent's plan is foiled when the Tevinter Mage explodes the ship out at sea, and when the two agents are caught, they kill themselves. But before they are captured, one of Fenharel's agents says that she is freely acting for the Dread Wolf to bring back what was once ours, what must be ours again. And the final story in Tevinter Nights, The Dread Wolf Take You, mentions Solus and actually has him make an appearance. And I highly recommend reading this story because it does a good job of showing the Solus we know from in-game and it was written by Patrick Weeks, the lead writer of Dreadwolf. So it adds a lot to his character and what the future may look like. The story begins with Charter, who you may recognize from Inquisition, meeting four individuals, a Carta assassin, 
a Norwegian bard, a mortalitasi, and an executor. They all sit down and the bard orders tea. They are meeting because they all possess a shared interest. The Inquisition's wolf. The assassin and Charter discuss Solus, and Charter reminds them that he is not a god. The bard, who is wearing a glittering dragon mask and golden locks, suggests that he is not a god. Maybe he is a young mage. He could be a simple elf who stumbled onto old magic. Charter goes on to say that the Inquisition does not know what Solus's plan actually is. This opens the others to provide information about what they know, beginning with the Carta assassin, who says that a Dalish elf was looking for the Lyrium idol. He tells the elf that the idol is gone, but the elf persists, saying he learned about the idol from a dream, with the help from the Dalish elf who brings a magical potion that can soften the Lyrium the Carta assassin and his team get the Lyrium idol out of Meredith's body. After they retrieve it and return to their safe house, former Templars find them and the elf starts trying to fight. So they knock him out. While waiting for the elf to wake up, several of the Templars and Carta members fall asleep, but then they suddenly start twitching. Their backs twist and they begin seizing. And then everyone goes still and everyone who was asleep is now dead with blood pouring from their ears. Someone killed them in their sleep, possibly their dream, but dwarves don't dream. After those were sleeping die, an arrow comes through the window and suddenly they are sworn by elves. But these are not Dalish elves and they do not have Valisline, but they do have fancy armor and bows and they act like professionals. One of them says that the idol must have been moved and he has a Ferelden accent not Dalish. Another elf that is scouting the room finds that the first elf that helped retrieve the idol is now dead. And he tells the elf, the dreadwolf guide your soul to peace, brother. The assassin says that as the elf was saying this, he did sound Dalish, but more formal. After this, the elves walk out and the assassin's story ends. After the Carta assassin finishes his story, the bard asks about the Templars, wondering how they found the safe house. After the assassin tells the bard that he didn't know, the bard says that now that they know that the Dreadwolf has agents working for him and that he has the power to kill those who oppose him as they sleep. Useful information. The bard even adds a little hair toss. Tensions rise after accusations of the assassin's story being fake upset the assassin. And as the assassin draws his blade, the bard immediately is in between the two. One hand raised before the assassin, and the other hand resting gently on the executor's glove. Please, Mezami, if we argue, none of us will learn what we came to find, says the bard. Then the mortalitasi tells his own tale. He tells a story about how a Tevinter mage came to perform a ritual with help from the mortalitasi. The ritual would direct the course of the fade against the Antom, so that every dream, every demon, every half-interested spirit would urge them back to the north away from humanity. He reveals that during the ritual, the Tevinter mage brought the Lyrium idol and elven slaves. The mage then used the slaves as sacrifices, slitting the throat of every one of them as they sat in a trance-like state in a circle around him. He caught the blood of his victims on the idol as he made his way around the circle. As this was happening, the idol changed and a spike of Lyrium sprung from the base of the idol and it became a ritual blade. He slashed his hand to continue the ritual, but before he could continue, the dread wolf arrives. And he did not arrive as an elf. He was a beast, unlike the mortalitasi had ever seen. Lupine in appearance, but the size of a high dragon, with a shaggy spiky hide and six burning eyes like a pride demon. And he says it came to us on wings of fire that resolves itself into a horde of lesser demons, as he descends on the ritual, the Dreadwolf says, You meddle past your understanding, foolish mortal mages, and in doing so, you threaten all creation. The Dreadwolf then bites down on the Tevinter mage, snapping him up in an instant. The Dreadwolf's lesser demons rush down upon them, crackling with fire and lightning, and the ritual collapses. He also says, You use my idol carelessly to vandalize the Sea of Dreams, now feel the pain of what you have created. 
The walls shake and crack, and then a rift of green light rent the ceiling above them open, and the demons that had accompanied the dread wolf burst into the world in right out fury. Shining warriors with blades forged from the raw fate itself, and behind them, dimly visible through the crackling light, the shadow of the beast itself, from whose jaws came the final words, roared not in anger, but with quiet contempt. From this moment, should you ever bind a spirit, then your life is mine. In the chaos of the Mortalitasi fighting off the lesser demons, a fellow Mortalitasi, who was a noble son, grabbed the lyrium idol and flung it into the chest that had housed it before the ritual, and then he ran off with it. The rift closed, but the lesser demons remained. Surprisingly enough, the bodies of the sacrifice elves twitched and shudders as spirits found them, and then they became corpses driven by spirits, and they attacked the demons and arcane horrors, and during this the Mortalitasi was able to flee, hence why he could tell his story now. He says that since this event, spirits whisper in his dreams now, accusing him of crimes he didn't commit, and promising vengeance if his wards ever fail. A weaker mage would already be dead or had gone mad. He finishes his story by saying, he intends something for the Fade, and if he wants the idol, then whatever he intends will be terrible. Charter suggests that Solus has an alliance with a demon and says that during his attacks on the South, Corypheus aligned himself with a fear demon as a way to trap the Grey Wardens. And the disapproving bard replies by saying that the Grey Wardens trap themselves. The Orlesian bard then goes on to recount his own tale. He tells of how he also came into contact with the Lyrium Idol, but it was being held by Tevinter Sakari, a golem, and a group of Kunari. He finds the idol is in an old elven location with the Tevinter Sakari and Kunari trying to get a hold of it. The female Kunari, the Ben Hasrath, says that the idol is being searched for by some dangerous mage who calls himself the Dread Wolf. She says that Solus's ritual has already started to affect the Fade and they cannot risk him acquiring the idol and finishing what he has begun. Suddenly, an alluvian in the room springs to life and a figure steps out, an elf in golden armor with a wolf pelt across his shoulder. The elf looks at them, face devoid of any expression. And then the elf's eyes blazed once with glowing light, and everyone stops while they were trying to flee, petrified by some strange and terrible magic. Even the golem that was amongst the Tevinter party is no more. The elf walks to the pedestal with the lyrium idol on it, and whispers something in Elven, tracing his gloved fingers gently along the crown figure who comforted the other. Then he turns back to his mirror and steps through the Illuvian and is gone. He finishes his story by saying, that is all I know of the dread wolf, I'm afraid. The idol's journey is now complete and it has found its master. He will destroy anyone in his way without regret or hesitation. And whatever he intends to do, I do not believe we can stop it. The rest of the table doesn't believe the bard and tensions rise once again. As the assassin and Mortalitasi are arguing, Charter says that there may be liars at this table and she asks for her life. Confused about what she means, they continue arguing and ignore her. Once again, she asks for her life. When the Carta assassin finally says he is not going to kill her, Charter responds by saying, I am not asking you. And if you think I regret not seeing Solus for what he was when he served the Inquisition, you are correct. I was outplayed. I will regret it forever. And I will never make the same mistake again. The bard asks, how can you be certain, mademoiselle? She looks at him at the face he has hidden under his dragon mask and says, by observing several small tells and three large ones. First, that few Orlesian bards would learn to speak the Cunari tongue, but not Elven and fewer of those who do not speak Elven would know the word for Alluvian, from the mirrors that let the ancient elves travel from place to place. Second, that the executor has not moved since you touched his hand while he and the assassin argued. And third, that you never drank your tea. I know you hate the taste of tea. It was a joke around Skyhold. Why would you order it? Because it was a joke around Skyhold, Solus tells Charter. I was uncertain this costume would suffice. So I did everything that the Dreadwolf would not, except it seems bring myself to drink the tea. To this, Charter asks for her life once more. 
Once the Carta assassin and Mortalitasi realize that this is the Dread Wolf, they go to move. But Solus's eyes light up and then they are frozen. Arlasa Mala, he says. And his Orlesian accent is now gone, replaced by his usual accent. I grant it to you, he tells Charter. Through all of this, Solus realized that one of the stirring sticks had been enchanted with a spirit, and he frees it. He then removes his silly outfit and tells Charter to be careful dealing with those across the sea because they are dangerous. And she replies with, more dangerous than the elf who threatens the world. And then she asks why Solus, he personally came to this meeting. I wish to know what you all knew, he said. There are many of you and you are not fools. As for me coming in person, the Inquisition was involved. Why did you come? Charter says that because you told the Inquisitor that you were going to destroy this world, did you expect us not to try to stop you? To this, Solus sighs. It was a moment of weakness. I told myself that it was because you all deserved to know, to live a few years in peace before my ritual was complete, before this world ended. Charter tells him he doesn't have to do this. And Solus says, I have no choice. What I am doing will save this world and those like you. The elves who still remain may even find it better when it is done. Charter says that those that she cares for would not and Solus smiles sadly at her. I know that feeling well. I am not a god, Charter. I am prideful, hot-headed, and foolish, and I am doing what I must. When you report back to the Inquisitor, say that I am sorry. With this, he walks away. After he leaves, Charter writes her report, thinking to herself about the meeting, prideful, hot-headed, foolish, doing what he must, sympathetic to elves, said that he was sorry. She made sure to include all of this in her report. After all, the Dreadwolf wasn't going to stop himself. And that is how Tevinter Nights ends. This last story is very good. All of them are very good and paint a fairly vivid picture of what Dreadwolf might look like. I definitely recommend it. And I explain this last chapter in great depth because I think this conversation with Solus, especially the part about the Inquisitor, is very important. And it also gave me the feels. It's also probably Solus's biggest appearance since Trespasser. But there are two more in the comics. Starting with Dragon Age Dark Fortress. In timeline-wise, this seems like it was set before the events of Dreadwolf take you. The story follows Fenris, Francesca, and Veya, and their journey stopping the Red Wraith. And this story is another journey with the Red Lyrium Idol. As Tractus Daenerys, Daenerys from Dragon Age 2's son, has stolen the idol. And in the final issue of the comic, the last page has Solus watching Fenris, Francesca, and Veya. We see Solus touching an alluvian he's been using to spy on the idol and its whereabouts. This is the only mention of him in this comic. And Solus is hinted at in Dragon Age The Missing, which is the latest comic. I really thought he was going to make a physical appearance here, so I was extremely bummed that he didn't. But anyways, the story is of Varric and Harding searching for Solus in a refugee in the ass end of nowhere, according to Varric. This refugee ends up being in the deep roads beneath Marnus Pell. Varric and Harding discuss their plan to find Solus and talk to him. And during this conversation, the panel cuts to this figure cloaked by shadows watching Varric and the crew. If this is Solus, it would make sense, but we aren't for sure if it's him. The next scene cuts to Varric talking with Charter from the story into Winter Nights. And she's the one asking Varric and Harding to find Solus. Varric has some hesitations because the Dreadwolf can be manipulative and he worries for Harding. Charter tells him she needs the person who puts together the team to know exactly what Solus is capable of. The story returns to Varric and his team in the deep roads and after fighting some darkspawn, they do find Solus's hideout. Varric says that Solus always hated the Blight, so he's surprised to see he's staying so close to the darkspawn. He says he didn't have to worry about anyone else coming by to visit. And going by whatever this magical crap is, he knew how to keep the darkspawn out. They realize Solus left all of his belongings in a hurry. And then they find an invitation to meet with Lady Chrysanthus at her home in Virantium. I also just want to point out how similar to Inquisition Varric looks here in this first comic, because when we get to the second one, his look has really changed. I don't know if a lot of time has passed between these, since it has been several years since Trespasser, but after some trouble, 
Varric and Harding make it to Lady Chrysanthus and find that she has been frozen in stone. Solus has been here. When investigating the room, they find that Lady Chrysanthus was a venatory spymaster, and she had information about the forest of Arlathan, and she specifically had information about an artifact called the Crucius Stone, some kind of magical weapon that could bring the Imperium to its knees, hence why Solus was after it. So, Varric and crew head to the Arlathan Forest to find him. After a confusing journey through the Arlathan Forest and a confrontation with the Varteral, they pass by some familiar Solus paintings, and Varric is almost killed by a leopard, but someone that looks like a Venatori saves him at the last minute, and Varric says that he doesn't think it was a Venatori that saved him. He thinks it was Solus. When they finally reach Solus's hideout, there is a note from Solus to Varric. It reads, You need not have worried. The artifact was never in danger into falling into Venatori hands. I hope that in time you will give up this pursuit. What must be done with will be done cautiously, and I will limit the damage as best as I can. I have no wish to be the villain in one of your stories, but interfering in matters you do not understand can only make things worse. The final comic in the missing series has Varric and Harding in Menrathus, and they decide that they need a plan for when they finally come face to face with the Dread Wolf. So they look for an investigator by the name of Nev Gallus, who says that she is tired of hearing about Solus but says he has been there, causing trouble. He attacked a bunch of Venatori sites in the city and stole some artifacts from them. He also freed a group of elven slaves, which have been causing even more trouble in the city with their rebellion. Harding says that Varric might need to be prepared to stop Solus by any means, but Varric reassures her that Solus freeing those slaves mean that there is still hope for him, and he'll knock some sense into him. Gallus takes Varric and Harding to where the freed slaves went, and they question the now freed elves. One of the elves tells Varric that Solus helped them more than anyone had before, and freed them from the Venatori, and he didn't want anything in return. They tell Varric that he's leaving Minrathus, but that night there might be a meetup with the slaves that Solus freed so that they can decide what to do next. They realize that this meetup is a trap, and so Varric and Harding decide to help the freed elves instead of chasing Solus which lets Solus get away. After successfully helping the elves, Varric and Harding realize Solus set up everything, and everything went as he planned. Varric and Harding helping the elves instead of following him was intended, and that let him escape. The final line in the comic is, maybe it's time we brought in some fresh help. Someone Solus doesn't know. Someone he won't see coming. And this is the final piece of media as of right now, tying into Dreadwolf. We did get this in-game cinematic that seems to be more of an introduction to Solus for new players and a recap for those who haven't played Trespasser, especially for those who haven't played in almost 10 years. I knew him as Solus, a thoughtful mage obsessed with dreams. But long ago, he had a different name. Fen Harel, the Dreadwolf. Ancient elven god of lies, or heroic rebel against tyranny, depending on which story you believe. In his final fight with the elven gods, Solus imprisoned them and created a veil that split our world from the raw magic of the Fade. But now, he wanted to tear down that veil and destroy the world. And we're the only ones who can stop him. So there's really not much new here, but in an older reveal from 2020, we can hear Solus's voice actor and see Gareth David Lloyd voicing some lines that seem like they're said to our next protagonist. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? So that is everything that we've seen of Solus since Trespasser. And as a recap, Solus is seen in To Winter Nights, Dark Fortress, and The Missing. The first story, titled Callback, is about Solus's guilt manifesting as a regret demon from the murals in the Skyhold Rotunda. The second story, titled Half Up Front, is about Solus's agents trying to stop any peace between the Cunari and Tevinter by trying to blow up a ship and framing a Tevinter Altus mage. But their plan is foiled and they kill themselves when they're caught. 
The final story is titled The Dreadwolf Take You and is about a meeting between Charter and three other assassins sharing information about Solus's whereabouts. Solus dresses up as an Orlesian bard with a dragon mask and blonde wig to infiltrate this meeting and to learn what everyone knows about his own movements. They each reveal a story about their encounter with the Dread Wolf, and the Carta assassin reveals that Solus can kill people in their sleep, even dwarves who do not dream. One of Solus's agents went to the Carta assassins with a special potion designed to soften red lyrium, which helped remove the idol from Meredith's body from the end of Dragon Age 2. The end of the story reveals that Solus's agents did not recover the idol during this mission and that it was moved. The Mortalitasi also tells of his encounter with the Dread Wolf. He says a Tevinter mage approached the Mortalitasi about a ritual to drive the demons and spirits away from humanity and towards the Antom. This mage brings the idol with him for his ritual and also brings his slaves to use in the ritual, arranging them in a circle around him and then cutting each one of their throats and putting their blood on the Lyrium idol. As this was happening, the idol changes to a Lyrium blade and the mage goes to cut his hand to continue the ritual, but is interrupted by the Dreadwolf himself. He appears as some kind of wolf-dragon hybrid, lupine in appearance with a shaggy spiked hide and six eyes like a pride demon. He is the size of a high dragon, has large talons and shows up on wings of fire that turn into a horde of lesser demons. The Dreadwolf pounces on the Tevinter mage and eats him causing the ritual to stop by bringing down fire and lightning. During the chaos of the Dreadwolf unleashing himself and his lesser demons from the Fade, a Tevinter Mage steals the idol and makes off with it. The rift closes, but the demons remain, and surprisingly the sacrificed elven slaves now twitch and shudder as spirits take over their bodies. They begin to attack the demons and arcane horrors left by Solus opening the Fade, which is how the Mortalitasi was able to flee. This is probably the most important Solus appearance since Trespasser. We learn of his Dreadwolf form and his new ability, and that he was going to great lengths to find the Lyrium Idol. We also see Solus in two comics, the first appearance being in the final page of Dark Fortress, and it reveals that he's watching the Lyrium Idol through an Alluvian. He also has a new armor set, which seems to be the one from the concept art revealed a while ago. And then his final appearance is in The Missing, he isn't physically shown, but Varric thinks he saved his life. And Varric and Harding also find a note from Solus to Varric. Varric tries following Solus, and they end up encountering freed elven slaves and help them escape the Venatori, which was all set up by Solus. The comic ends with Solus fleeing, and the last line of the comic hints at our new protagonist's involvement in the story. And that's it. And there is one more Solus reference into Winter Nights in the short story titled Genitivi Dies in the End, but it isn't an appearance or movement surrounding his agents. It's about his name. Brisson is a Tamasrin we meet in Those Who Speak, and in Winter Nights she explains that Solus is not Solus's true name either. Fenharel is a name given by enemies. Dreadwolf isn't true. The name given when he lied to us and to your Inquisition was chosen by a self-styled martyr. Solus is also not true. Pride, it means pride. What this actually means yet, we don't know, but there is a popular theory that Solus was a spirit of wisdom that was called upon by Mithal, based on a line said by Cole. He did not want a body, but she asked him to come. He left a scar when he burned her off his face. And there's also this other line which also ties into this theory and shed some more light onto who Solus could be. Barefaced but free, frolicking, fighting fierce. He wants to give wisdom, not orders. These lines lean into the theory that Mithal gave Solus a body, and she used him against his purpose, which was wisdom. And if it wasn't wisdom, it might have been faith. As Gator, Dragon Age's previous lead writer, said back in 2013, that the corruption of faith is pride. So it's suspected wisdom or faith or something else in Elven would be his true name. There are a ton of theories surrounding Solus and Mithal and their complicated connection and implications from the ending of Inquisition. Additionally, the theory revolves around Solus's scars being removed from Mithal's Valisleen when he served under her, 
and her Valiseline designs align with the position of his scars. These are my favorite theories and the ones I hope to see come true in Dreadwolf. There are some really amazing breakdowns. If you're interested in more theories surrounding Solus, Mithal, and the Lyrium Idol, go check out Gildurthalyn's channel. The lore in Dragon Age is extremely complex and intricate, so I'll mostly be focusing on character backgrounds and solid lore because my brain is too small to theorize in the Dragon Age universe, except when it comes to Solus. I am planning some upcoming videos on the whereabouts of Varric, Morrigan, Dorian, the Inquisitor, Fenris, the Griffins, and additionally we'll be covering the full reveal this summer, which should be within the next few months. So if you're interested in more Dragon Age content, subscribe for more. In the meantime, check out Gil Durthalyn's videos and breakdowns of the recent teasers. And let me know what you think of everything we've seen about Solus so far. Do you want to see his wolf form? Who do you think he actually is? And do you plan on redeeming him or do you want to kill him? Let me know in the comments and a special thank you to my channel members. Thank you for all your support and see you next time.